We are, have the honor of having Dr. Peter Slurve with us from uh, the Department of Astronomy at UMass at Amherst. Uh, he will present a summary on the large millimeter telescope project and its scientific potential. Uh, oh, yeah. The uh, large millimeter telescope, millimeter telescope is a 50 millimeter diameter radio telescope designed for operations of wavelengths between one and four millimeters. The large size of the scope will enable observation of clouds in distant galaxies at the earliest stages of galaxy formation and provide important clues about the history of star formation and gal galaxy evolution in the universe. When it is completed, it will be the largest telescope of its kind in the world. Help me, like, help me welcome uh, Dr. Peter Slurp. Thanks. It's, it's, uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, you know, I was uh, driving around trying to figure out if I was at the right place or not. <laughs> Dri you know, driving back and forth here. And then I noticed that there were people coming into this building and I wondered if maybe that was the right place. And then I started to notice that they were looking up at the sky. <laughs> and so then I skipped that's the right building. I, I have some experience talking to uh, amateur astronomy groups, um, and uh, I was actually hoping for a cloudy night because, you know, what I've discovered is that I would be giving my talk and thinking I was doing pretty well, and everybody was looking, would be looking pretty interested out there, uh, and then all of a sudden it would start to get dark, and people would look at their watch, and, uh, you know, you know, start to you know, kind of look around the outside of the so, so anyway, yeah, um, I, I guess it is actually clear, at least tonight we can see the moon, if not tomorrow night. Uh, uh, this remote will work, and there's a laser pointer on, on the bottom. Oh, cool. Okay, so there's a laser pointer forward and reverse. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, so this is the Large Millimeter Telescope, and I'm going to uh, try to tell you uh, a little bit about this uh, uh, crazy project. Um, uh, it's, as you can tell, a radio telescope, and so we'll be talking a bit about, uh, about all of that. Um, so basically, I have uh, two major things that I'd like to go over with you tonight. I'd like to tell you about the project itself, because uh, if you're like most amateur astronomers, I know you're kind of interested in telescopes and building telescopes and things like that. And uh, this has been a pretty cool project uh, as far as building a big telescope and uh, so on. Uh, what you have to hope is that I don't go into anecdote mode for each slide because then we'll be here until, well, too late. Well, maybe we'll be here until the lunar eclipse tomorrow. <laughs> well said. And then the other thing I'd like to do is to tell you a bit about the scientific potential of this instrument. I mean, after all, that's why we build the telescope, is that we hope, uh, uh, we hope to discover things, and I think you'll see that this is going to be a great instrument for discovery in astronomy. So first, let's talk a bit about the Large Millimeter Telescope itself. Um, uh, the LMT is a, a 50 meter diameter millimeter wave uh, uh, antenna. Um, they're in, uh, we've been calling it now for close to 20 years, the Large Millimeter Telescope, and you know, people often look at that name and say, well, I thought all millimeters were the same size. Um, uh, but, uh, so in fact, we should be calling it the Large Millimeter Wave uh, Telescope. Um, this is a project that's done jointly with uh, the country of Mexico, and so in, in fact, uh, in Spanish, uh, it's called Gran Telescopio Milimétrico, which is a better uh, way of, uh, of, of or large millimetric telescope, better way of uh, phrasing it. So it's a 50 meter diameter dish. Um, the, uh, the surface uh, is a kind of a special kind of telescope surface. Um, it's, uh, for those that know a big telescope, it's like the Keck telescope, the Keck optical telescope, in that the surface is divided up into a lot of small uh, regions of the 185 meter sections. Uh, and each of those is under the control of a computer so that we can realign the surface and maintain a, a good parabolic shape under all uh, conditions of gravity and thermal gradients and all the rest of that. And our overall uh, accuracy specification is 75 micrometers uh, RMS or three thousandths of an inch um, uh, over the entire 50 meters. Um, and we have to point this thing very uh, accurately. The, the, 
the diffraction limited beam of the telescope uh, at its shortest operating wavelength of about one millimeter is five arc seconds in the sky. So we have to point to something like a fraction uh, of an arc second accuracy, uh, which is something that for a big structure like this hasn't ever been done before. The best people have done is uh, maybe twice that number. At this point. So that's going to be a big challenge. Um, uh, we're currently, uh, as you can see, this is a picture that was actually taken on Monday. Um, uh, uh, the telescope uh, at the site, uh, we're currently under construction, and you'll see that it's looking a lot like a telescope these days. Um, on a site uh, in Mexico, it's uh, at 15,000 feet. Uh, we had to go that high in order to get uh, the best observing uh, conditions uh, for millimeter waves. Uh, the, the principal thing that you have to worry about is how much water vapor there is in the atmosphere uh, to see through, and the less there is, the better. Uh, it's at 19 degrees latitude, which is good because it allows us to see farther south. Um, um, uh, we're equipping it with uh, what we modestly call state-of-the-art instrumentation. Uh, that's one of the things that the University of Massachusetts does uh, extremely well, is we build state-of-the-art instrumentation for millimeter wave telescopes. Uh, here's a little cartoon uh, showing the, the basic features of the telescope. Uh, 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 there's a, a large concrete uh, uh, cone uh, down below this whole thing that uh, supports it. Uh, we have a big steel structure which now is all covered with uh, uh, thermal insulation to uh, uh, minimize temperature gradients uh, on the whole thing. We have the re re reflector surface which uh, 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 is, is active as I, as I said before. Uh, this, is, uh, this telescope is an out as mount. Uh, it's a particular kind that we call a wheel and track design in radio astronomy. So basically we have this big structure uh, we call the alidade. This is a, a large steel frame. Uh, the frame has at its corners uh, four sets of four uh, wheels. Each wheel is one meter across. So uh, uh, we have these 16 enormous wheels. The whole thing uh, weighs a, a couple of thousand tons. Um, and uh, I can tell you, if, you know, from now having pointed it uh, and so on, that uh, she moves like a dream. Yeah, she <laughs> really moves smoothly and beautifully. Um, one other feature of all of this, uh, it's such a big telescope. There are actually two of these wheels, and so in between those wheels there's something we call modestly the receiver cabin, and it's actually about a three-story building that is uh, tucked, uh, tucked in behind there for all of our instruments and electronics and all the rest of the stuff you need for uh, radio astronomy. Is that the counterbalance also? Yeah, the, uh, the wheels are the counterweights. So they're basically, uh, well, this dimension is uh, about uh, 15 or 20 meters, and uh, these were, they're steel and uh, they're filled with concrete. In fact, you couldn't fill them with normal, we needed more density than normal concrete, so it was put in bare right in the concrete. Through in iron bars and it's Mexico. So. What kind of bearings? What kind of bearings? Bearings. Um, okay, well, there's, uh, there is one um, at the top of this concrete section, there's one, uh, one uh, uh, bearing. It's a, what we call the pimple bearing. It's at the, at the top of this thing. Its basic um, purpose is not, not to hold anything up and down, but to keep the thing from moving side to side, and it adds a lot of stiffness. And that thing is 11 meters across. And then, um, uh, then there's uh, two bearings the, for the elevation. Um, uh, each of those is the better part of a meter across uh, with, a, with a, a large machine shaft. This is all you know, big heavy machine stuff that we had done in northern Italy, which is the, if you want to make a great big, very precise, heavy steel machine part, northern Italy is the place to go. 